Hey everybody, uh, Chief Meteorologist Brad Penovich here. Let's do another quick update on kind of the developing winter storm for the weekend. Um, it's crazy how much this storm is getting talked about, and I'm seeing so many people focus on huge snowfall mounts. Um, sure, that potential is there, but I'm going to show you why I would be very cautious about getting carried away with big snow amounts. Somebody's going to see big snow, probably in the southeast, but it's probably not in the spots that many people think. So let me show you what's going on here. So what you're looking at here to get kind of weather geeky, um, this is a 700 millibar uh, vertical vorticity. So what we're looking at is where we have a lot of lift um, in the mid levels, uh, mid to lower levels of the atmosphere. And what I'm looking for here is I often look for the track of the 700 millibar low. That tends to be a pretty good indicator of where we're gonna see snow, especially on the northwest side of that low. And what's happened in the trend in the models recently is there's been a trend for this low pressure system to trend or move a little bit further inland, tracking more over the Carolinas as opposed to closer to the coast. And why is that important? Well, a couple of things. That brings the, the snow and sleet and freezing rain farther inland, but it also brings in that warm nose, which starts mixing in warmer air just above the surface, which is not ideal for snow, obviously. So let's look at those winter weather probabilities. Uh, this is the updated one for Saturday into Sunday. Um, 8 a.m. to 8 um, a.m. Saturday to Sunday. Remember, um, a lot of this is going to happen Saturday night and Sunday, so I don't think we'll see much on Saturday morning. But you can see what's going on here. Um, the highest probabilities of seeing wintry precipitation, again, this includes ice and snow, just not snow, is starting to look to be right in here. Uh, that's the 30 to 50 percent range, and then in these upslope regions, we're in the 50 to 70 percent range. Um, but you kind of see that cutoff, the typical I-85 cutoff. Now, people see these maps and say snow, snow. Remember, this is not just snow. There are three winter precipitation types, sleet, freezing rain, and snow. And, and these maps are telling you where any of that could fall, not just snow. So be very careful with what you're seeing here. And then we go into Sunday, into Monday, and you can see how the area is in the 30 to 50% range. So it's trended up. If you've been watching and paying attention, uh, it's trending up for wintry weather possibilities. So let's get right to um, the, the models here because this is going to kind of show you. Now again, I'm showing you the models to kind of show you the overall view. This is not going to happen exactly the way the guidance says. Everybody who's pulling out their phone and saying, oh my gosh, we're getting 8 to 12 inches, blah, blah. Those are deterministic model outputs. It's not going to happen that way. What's going to happen is we often say with models, all models are wrong, but some models are useful. They are tools to build a forecast. So in that case, I'm going to show you how these tools are starting to show us some things about this system. So we'll go back this up and you can see that the pieces of energy, the northern branch has got this super strong piece of energy coming down and it cuts off a low. This is something that we're getting some consensus on. The, the, the models are starting to all agree that this low is gonna cut off to the west of the Carolinas. So you see the storm developing here over the mid-south west of us. We also have a big sprawling cold area of high pressure. This is key. This is why the confidence in some type of wintry weather, whether it be ice, sleet, or snow, is trending up because the cold air is there. Um, especially at the surface. So we're gonna be pulling that cold air into the Carolinas ahead of the system. The problem is, look where the low pressure system is. It's pretty far inland. Um, and that's gonna allow for warmer air from the Gulf of Mexico to get pulled north, which is great because that's moisture for snow, for snow lovers, but it also brings the warm air in with it, especially in the mid level. So as we go through time, you see this system move into the Carolinas and you start seeing, yeah, there's blue there, but there's a lot of pink and purple which is ice, 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 okay? That's significant icing, um, possibly. And I'm gonna show you a close-up view of this because I wanna show you kind of what the soundings are saying. Now, again, this is just one deterministic run, but we're starting to see more of the guidance, the ensemble members trending in this direction. So I'm gonna stop this, you know, 10 a.m. on Sunday morning, um, and I'm gonna drop a little cursor there. We're gonna pull up a, an atmospheric sounding. So for this to be all snow, we'd want these red and green lines, which is the air temperature and dew point, to be all to the left of this blue line, which is the, the, the zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees. We want it all to be to the, to the left. See this little thing? It looks like a nose, right? If a profile of a person, we call that a warm nose. So that warm nose is where the temperature is above freezing. So things falling are melting on the way down. Now, sometimes they melt um, all the way back to liquid and then down at the ground it's below freezing that becomes freezing rain sometimes they partially melt then refreeze that becomes sleet and right now this looks heavily like a sleet sounding but if the warm nose is a, just a hair stronger it could be freezing rain 
Now, if we get heavy precipitation rates and that, that low pressure system tracks a little farther east, um, that could help us out and pull colder air down to the surface and make this primarily snow. But right now, that's not that's not the way the guidance is trending. Even the Euro and uh, all the other models that we look at, the, the Canadian, um, a lot of the short range are starting to pick up on this. That's a lot of ice, folks. That is a whole lot of ice for the I-85 corridor. So while we're getting excited for winter weather, and I know a lot of snow lovers are, I had to very much caution people to say, hey, this is looking like ice, especially for the Charlotte area. Um, so we'll back this up. I'll show you a wider view here. Again, the reason we're seeing the ice become more of a problem is the low is up in here, um, and the shield of heavy snow is going to be on this northwest side. So where the low tracks, that northwest side is going to track with it. So if the low is tracking here, it would pull that, that snow line here. The low tracks just a little bit further south, it starts pulling the heavy snow further south as well into this corridor. But right now, that doesn't look to be the case. So let's go back to this because one of the interesting things is see how it turns the corner here and comes up the east coast. You see it turn the corner and move more due north and go up into New England and kind of do one of those. For us, if we were to see a heavy snow setup um, with this, we would want this low to not do this. We'd want it to be more down in this range and do this or even off in this range. So that little change, and that's why there's still uncertainty in the forecast because those kind of solutions are still left to be worked out. So um, we're not quite ready to put out totals, but I will show you the ensemble members here real quickly. Um, again, these are all the ensembles for the European um, run last night. Um, almost everything has some type of wintry precip. But if you look at the mean, it's going to be much lower than some of the wild numbers you're seeing thrown out there because this is probably more realistic. It's going to get rid of the high end and low end, and there's going to be a lot of mixing in there. GFS, kind of the same thing, kind of in that one to three inch range. And again, that's with a ton of sleet or ice mixed in. And remember, sleet or freezing rain for any length of time messes up snowfall totals. So uh, as we get closer to the weekend, we're going to have a really good idea on the amounts, I think, um, but we could still see that dreaded warm nose mix in and cause things to be a little chaotic. So what I will tell you right now is the confidence in some type of wintry weather is increasing for the weekend. Um, when you look at the map like this, that's, that, that's starting to trend towards a pretty high probability we're going to see some snow, sleet, or freezing rain. Um, the amounts and duration of those types are still in question, but the fact that those are going to fall at some point and in some intensity is not as much in question as you might think. Um, I know sometimes these seem like wishy-washy things, but you know, you're talking about the difference between uh, rain and ice is 0.1 degrees. Like I often joke with people, 32.0 is snow, 32.1 is rain, okay? Um, and in some cases it's rain or ice. So th they're very small changes have huge impacts on the outcome in this, but the chance for wintry weather is absolutely there on Sunday into Monday. So for anybody out there who's watching the vlog, the thing is don't do the silly stuff we do, bread and milk, but be prepared that Sunday into Monday travel is gonna be rough and we could have ice. So think about things that you know could be impacted by ice, whether it's power outages, possibly, I know it's too early to even say, but that could be a possibility. So maybe think about charging things up, having some ways to get um, heat or uh, other ways to, you know, go have another place to go in case you need electricity. Those are the type of things to think about. Some supplies, sure. Some, it's always good to have a plan, but you're not going to be snowed in for weeks and weeks and weeks. Remember, it's going to be a couple days, so think about that's the kind of planning we have to do. But again, the timing is going to be starting probably late Saturday, but primarily Sunday um, into Sunday night and Monday because behind the system, really cold air moves in, and then everything that whatever falls is going to ice up by Monday. So Monday, even Tuesday, Wednesday, the mornings with these freezes every night are likely going to be pretty slick. So we'll have an update. I'll be home tomorrow. We'll probably uh, start look, working on possible a map, at least where the rain snow line sets up. But I tell you, this this map right here is, is telling me a lot, and and I kind of agree with it, that I think that the best chance for snow is going to be in this range right now, and then we're going to have the dreaded wintry mix in this area with probably a lot of sleet. And then further south, it's kind of maybe just brief mixing in there. So um, we'll work on those maps, get those out in a, maybe tomorrow or even first thing on Friday. But we still got time. We're now in that 
four to five day range um, for this system, kind of getting in the four day range, where we're starting to trend a little icier than we'd like to see.